Blessed Pope John the 23rd will be canonized on Divine Mercy Sunday, April 27, 2014, at the Vatican. Known as the Good Pope, he is very deserving of this honor of sainthood, as he is a great example of the call to holiness that all Christians are called to in living out their faith. The secular Franciscan order welcomes John the 23rd as its newest saint. Blessed John the 23rd was born on November 25, 1881, in the province of Bergen, Italy, and baptized that same day as Angelo Giuseppe Roncalli. Angelo was the fourth of 13 children and was raised in a devout and loving family. His family and relatives were all sharecroppers who lived a poor life working on farms in northern Italy. In 1892, Angelo was accepted to the Bergen Seminary for schooling. This is where much of his spiritual formation began and where he found inspiration from the saints, and especially St. Francis of Assisi, with his love of living the gospel life, care for creation, and working towards peace in this world. Angelo was drawn to Franciscan spirituality and was admitted to the secular Franciscan order on March 1, 1896, went through formation it was, and made his profession to the secular Franciscan order on May 23, 1897, at the age of 15. The secular Franciscan order was founded by St. Francis of Assisi and is now the largest order in the Roman Catholic Church with 400,000 members and is the only third order that allows both lay and religious to join. While at the Bergen Seminary, Angelo began to write an amazing diary of his spiritual journey called Journal of a Soul, which he wrote all the way through his papacy until his death, and offers a unique insight into this beloved saint's life. Angelo was ordained a priest on August 10, 1904, and lived a faithful life serving as a priest, seated in this, in this photo. During World War I, Angelo was drafted into the Royal Italian Army and served as a sergeant in the medical corps, serving the wounded and as a chaplain. Angelo lost two of his own brothers in World War I, and one was missing in action. Angelo concluded that there was nothing more evil than war. In 1925, the Vatican established relations with Bulgaria, and Angelo was named a bishop. Bishop Roncalli took the motto, Abundencia et Pax, meaning obedience and peace. This motto served him well, saying it often, and living it out in truth through his actions of obedience to living the gospel life and working toward a peaceful world. In 1953, Bishop Roncalli was named a Cardinal and Patriarch of Venice by Pope Pius XII. He thought it may be his last assignment as he was advancing in age, but the Holy Spirit had other things in mind. Pope Pius XII died on October 9, 1958, Cardinal Roncalli was summoned to Rome and during the 11th ballot was elected as the 262nd Pope of the Roman Catholic Church. He chose the name John XXIII for his papacy which began on October 28, 1958. Many thought that Pope John XXIII would have an uneventful time during his time in the chair of St. Peter, but he proved them wrong and became a beloved Pope who accomplished many things in less than five years as Bishop of Rome. On January 29, 1959, Pope John XXIII called for the Second Vatican Council, which would help modernize the Roman Catholic Church. The Second Vatican Council started historic dialogue that brought about important changes and documents that are still guiding the Church today. Pope Paul VI, John Paul II, and Benedict XVI were all in attendance as bishops and continued the work of implementing Vatican II, as is Pope Francis is today. One of the hallmarks of Pope John XXIII was his constant effort for world peace. During the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, the world came close to having a nuclear war. Pope John XXIII worked for peace and helped facilitate dialogue and offered to moderate with both President John F. Kennedy and Nikita Khrushchev. Only two months after the Cuban Missile Crisis and during the Cold War, he issued the encyclical Pacem in Terris, meaning peace on earth. It was the first time that a pope had issued an encyclical that was not only addressed to the Catholic Church, but to all men of good will. Pachamon Terris stated that conflicts should not be resolved by recourse to arms, but rather by negotiation. 
It also addressed human rights, saying that every man has the right to life, to bodily integrity, and to the means which are suitable for the proper development of life. This document is 50 years old, but still is relevant to today's society. Pope John XXIII sadly died after battling stomach cancer on June 3, 1963. Many people came to his funeral at the Vatican, mourning the loss of the good Pope. He now lies in saintly preservation at the Vatican. Six months after his passing, U.S. President Lyndon Johnson posthumously awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the United States' highest civilian award, in recognition of the good relationship between Pope John XXIII and the United States of America. In his speech, Johnson said, He was a man of simple origins, of simple faith, of simple charity. In this exalted office, he was still the gentle pastor. He believed in discussion and persuasion. He profoundly respected the dignity of man. He gave the world immortal statements of the rights of the man, of the obligations of men to each other, and of their duty to strive for a world community in which all can live in peace and fraternal friendship. His goodness reached across temporal boundaries to warm the hearts of men of all nations and of all faiths. In the Steps to Sainthood, the Fathers of the Second Vatican Council wanted to name Pope John XXIII by acclamation, but Pope Paul VI said he should go through the same process to sainthood as the other saints. Pope Paul VI continued and finalized the Second Vatican Council and started the first step to sainthood by naming Pope John XXIII a Servant of God on November 18, 1965. On September 3, 2000, Pope John Paul II named Pope John XXIII Blessed with the approval of John's first miracle. The miracle was the sudden recovery of Sister Caterina Capatini of the Daughters of Charity in Naples on May 25, 1966. She was suffering from ulcerative hemorrhagic gastritis that had brought her close to death. After praying to Pope John's intercession with her sisters, she saw Pope John, who reassured her. After this extraordinary event, she regained health. Pope Francis recently announced that he would be canonized both Pope John XXIII and Pope John II on Divine Mercy Sunday in 2014. What a beautiful gesture. Both men exude the mercy, grace, and love of God on a feast day that was instituted by Pope John Paul II. What a blessing to our church to have John XXIII for the brief time we had him as a pope. I encourage you to read the Journal of a Soul and his eight encyclicals and three apostolic exhortations to know more about the good Pope and now a great saint. May our new saints John the 23rd and John Paul II bless us all this Divine Mercy Sunday with their canonizations.